Hi, it is Allison Dorant coming to you from my very cold studio here in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. There is a minus 40 degree wind chill today, so I am quite happy to be staying inside and I wanted to show you where I've left off with this huge swatched palette. So for those of you that have been following my videos, particularly my swatching videos, I have Beam Paints, which is the Canadian company, and they make these gorgeous little paint stones. So these just happen to be sitting out. This is Robin's Egg. It's such a gorgeous light turquoise. And then this is another favorite, Fiddlehead Green. And that one, I, I was doing some little mini watercolor cards last evening just to relax and kind of create some bases to come back to. Maybe we can do some of these in our video today, do some mark making over top. But you can see this is Fiddlehead Green, that gorgeous sparkle that's sort of right, uh, right in there, blooming out into that dark green. So... I just had to share the beauty of that and then I also tucked it in uh, this little card as well. You can just see that gorgeous shimmer. So their colors are stunning. So the beam paint stones pretty much are all on this side and then I had I had several requests to do a quick swatch of the Stone Ground Paint Co. gouache. And I don't have a lot of experience with gouache, but I do love using, I love using it <laughs> with my limited knowledge. And I have bought different brands of gouache and I do love opacity next to transparency in my artwork. And I get that by using sometimes watercolor and say acrylic paint, uh, watered down acrylic and very similar uh, to gouache is that effect that you can get. So I just wanted to say though, the stone ground paint gouache is right here. And I always tend to leave a color out when I do swatching videos. Uh, so thank you so much to the kind soul that had pointed out I had missed Saskatoon Berry, I think, when I was doing this swatch. So uh, we have Hansa Yellow, India Yellow, Pyrrole Orange, Naphtha Red, we have Rose Garden, and then we have Saskatoon Berry, which I slipped in there, and then we have Rhubarb Pie next to Sweet Pea, Iris. This is so dark, what's that one? Delft Cobalt, Ultramarine Blue, Bluebell Wood, Water Lily Pink, Cobalt Aquamarine, Pistachio, which is another beautiful color. It's very similar to Robin's Egg over here, but this is again Stone Ground Paint Co. It's a gouache and it is more of a greenish color and then i'm also going to show you this daniel smith extra fine watercolor fuchsite genuine is very similar to pistachio and it's sort of a mix of robin's egg and pistachio i really love it so i'm going to swatch that on in just a minute and next to that we have cedar leaf um cedar leaf summer pear naples yellow deep mars orange India Red, Florentine Green, Raw Umber Dark Neutral, Lamp Black, Titan Buff, and Titan White. So that was just a super quick review, hopefully I didn't leave anything out there, of the Saskatchewan, uh, the company out of Regina, Saskatchewan, uh, the Stone Ground Paint Co. So another really wonderful company. And I wanted to put in some of my favorite individual brands while I'm doing this uh, swatched palette. I just wanted to introduce you to, this is a Ukrainian company called Rosa. And they have these in um, various locations. Uh, you can find them online. I believe they have... Uh, their own online store now, the Ukrainian watercolors. Really nice to support Ukraine just with everything going on in their country. And I had purchased this here in Calgary at Kensington Art Supply 
and I bought it individually and it was so affordable. I think I only paid less than $4 Canadian and I was really shocked at the quality. So this is number 756, the coral. I'm just gonna see if I can bring you guys closer. And now this is watercolor, but it really comes out like a gouache. And I use this color in so much of my work. So I really wanted to share that. So Rosa, R-O-S-A, and I can link their website in the description of this video. So that's that one. And then the next one is by Stone Ground Paint Co. And it's Rowan Berry. And that's right here. It has a gorgeous shimmer. And then we have Opera Pink, which is another favorite. And uh, that's by Daniel Smith, Watercolors Extra Fine. And then we have another one from Stone Ground Paint Co. This I bought individually again here in Calgary. And this is Gray J. And it's almost like a grayish lavender. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous color shimmer. So there's those. And then I was trying to go back into a bag of watercolors where the tubes I have just gone back to time and time again. And I wanted to kind of share those favorites that I keep going back to that don't fit into the categories of what I've been swatching. So I'm going to start with what I've written down here. And I'm just going to make sure you are, yes, zoomed in. And here we go. So we're going to start with Soldite Genuine by Daniel Smith, Extra Fine Watercolors. See if I can get the lid off here. Here we go. And I'm just going to actually dip right into the lid because there's quite a bit of pigment in the lid. Make sure this is Soldite Genuine by Daniel Smith. And I love adding darks to my work to add contrast. And I just love having the darks in with the lights. And so this is a little bit like a Mars Black. Um, just a little bit of more of a darker color. It will be interesting to see how close it is to the Mars Black of Beam Paints. So we'll just see when that dries. And just gonna dip that onto my palette. And the next one we're gonna go to is Iridescent Bronze by Daniel Smith. So that one is this one here. I really love the Daniel Smith metallics. I tend to paint with these metallics a lot. So I'm gonna, gonna just grab my little palette over here, have it handy, and again, just dip into the lid. So iridescent bronze. So we'll get the lid back on that one. And sometimes I forget this was just a little practice, meditative uh, sort of play what I did last evening. I was just tired but wanted to do rainbows and line work. And this is what uh, had come out. And I really like this little journal because you can see I clean my brushes in here. There's a little background that I had started. Need to go back and finish it. Same with this one. I love neons. I forget what I'm talking about. Oh, I know. <laughs> I was going to show you. Yeah, this is how I clean my brushes. And this is, oh, I know. It's a Kenson XL mixed media journal and it's 98 pound paper and I had covered 
the cover. <laughs> so it's that really pretty kind of ultramarine blue Canson XL watercolor book. And this is what I like to have on hand instead of putting paint down into a paper towel or into my water. When I'm done swatching, I'm just gonna go over to my little page here and create a new background for a painting. So Rose Matter Permanent by Daniel Smith is another color that I use quite often. And Daniel Smith watercolors were probably the first you know, more professional grade watercolors that I got into after taking classes through Laura Horn Art. So Laura Horn from Australia, a lot of you probably know Laura Horn. She's a very well-known Australian artist that does these gorgeous mixed media and watercolor paintings. And she teaches, has a podcast, with her husband, Richie. I think they're just starting that up again this January. Uh, Laura Horn is uh, really wonderful. Okay, Rose Matter Permanent. So that's just a really gorgeous, almost like a magenta. And then we're gonna go to Perline Green. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing these right, but all that matters is you have the spelling and, and I can list them for you after in the description of my video. I don't use green a lot in my work, but lately I've been really craving green. Maybe that's because we are surrounded by so much white, beautiful snow. So you can just see how dark and beautiful that is. We're just gonna get rid of that drip. And I am not very good at cleaning around the edge prior to putting the lid on. You know what, I'm gonna do that right now while I'm on video because it's still a bit wet and I'm making a bit of a mess, but I have all of this dried watercolor going everywhere from my poor recapping of these lids. My husband would tease me because I'm always after him for not putting the cap on the toothpaste. It's one of my, uh, I guess you could say a pet peeve. Uh, it's not a big deal, but it does, you know, the toothpaste dries out. So I guess I'm not very good with cleaning the lids of my watercolors. Next up is iridescent copper, which is, you can see the tube is really squished down. Uh, I'm going to get every last little bit of pigment, Iridescent Copper by Daniel Smith, and that is right here. And we'll put it next to Iridescent Bronze, so you can just see the copper versus the bronze by Daniel Smith. And I'm creating a little palette over here that is a palette I wouldn't typically kind of Put together even though I would use these watercolors frequently. Next up is another dark favorite like a neutral it's not black it's Payne's Gray and it looks like it's quite dried in there but I'm gonna see if I can salvage it and I tend to use a lot of pigment but this is Payne's Gray by Daniel Smith. It's almost like the Timberwolf watercolor by beam paint oh you know what well it's not that close actually <laughs> i take that back because this is timberwolf gray and this is Payne's gray and the copper is bleeding in but we're not going to be too particular about that i'm not sure if i'm going to replace that one when it's finished or i'll probably use one that i have and try and get a similar color and then this is definitely a favorite gold. So recently when I was learning a little bit about Gustav Klimt, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, Austrian artist uh, from the 1800s, 
he used so many different varieties of gold. So if you've been following my videos, you'll know that I was on Skillshare and I'd taken a wonderful class. Actually, I'm still still kind of taking it through Denise Love, Two Little Owls Art Studio. She's an incredible YouTuber, but she has done really amazing classes on Gustav Klimt. And I don't know anything about art history, but I am really interested in learning. And his work is quite beautiful. It really speaks to me, the detail, the intricacy of his mark making and all the varieties of golds. You know, yes, metallics, but golds. There's so many different hues of golds in his work. And it's quite incredible to think how he achieved that back in the 1800s. I think he ah, lived till he was 55. I almost have 1918. I believe he'd passed away. Um, I don't know if that's right. I have to learn a bit more. Okay, Fuchsite Genuine. I do know I think he had 14 kids and I don't think he married, but he had multiple wives or well not wives partners I guess oh this is so pretty so fuchsite genuine so I left just enough of a space down here on my palette to get that in there it's almost like pistachio but it has a bit more of a shimmer so this uh if you like those mica pigments uh, there is a shimmer in this uh, fuchsite Daniel Smith watercolor. Now these watercolors are not cheap. So I encourage you, of course, to use what you have, try and learn how to do color mixing with what you have. And the only positive thing with the watercolor is a little goes a long way. So, and I use a lot of pigment when I paint, but a little does go a long way. So I think I have all of the palette now complete and I'm super excited to be able to I'm gonna just zoom you out excited to zoom you out but also excited to when this fully dries I am going to buff it with Dorland's wax medium cold wax and let it kind of let those fumes kind of go off into, <laughs> won't be outside today, but uh, off into a well-ventilated space. And after about 48 to 72 hours, I'll be able to hopefully paint on it and show you what I have come up with. So this is my most recent project. And I think now I can show you a few other projects that we've sort of been working on together. So I think it was yesterday, maybe it was the day before, all the days I lose track when I have cabin fever. <laughs> but we had done mounting of paper to wood panel, cradled wood panel. So I just wanted to show you this morning, I had used my X-Acto knife. I'm just gonna clean up this area a little bit. And this painting, was originally on this really large sheet of 140 pound Canson watercolor paper. And I just decided I didn't love the art. This was done, uh, well, in 2020, I was just practicing different techniques. I didn't finish it. And I, I still love different things about it, but I just decided to change it up so <laughs> I'm going to use these scraps of paper for something different and here I am left with this watercolor paper mounted otherwise known as glued to this cradled wood panel so cradle means it has this edge on it and I do have this sort of wired and ready to hang on the back if you have a fairly big edge you can just hang it right off of a nail or put in one of those sawtooth hooks, sawtooth backings. But this, I love that reticulated texture that I have in here. I love some of the, uh, you know, what I used here was a gelato. <laughs> and so uh, 
you know, right now I just am excited to start finishing this, bringing it together, making it something new. And it's really fun to work on this hard wood and a different substrate. So this is where I'm at. <laughs> so probably the second stage of this painting. And... And then we had this one which I had done in my art journal on black toned paper. I'm trying to figure out which way is up. And it was sort of a diptych. I'm not sure how this is going to look on the wall. And this was the outcome of that video that I had just done with you all. So mounting this black paper to panel. And I'm going to show you the process I use for sanding the edges because you can just see this paper pulled when I use the X-Acto knife to cut it. So I'm just gonna kind of clean up the edges. So I'm just gonna get a fine sander. So I'm still in my art room. <laughs> Whoops. Ah, good thing I didn't trip, I have so much in here. This is a nice soft green sander, this one as well. You can just find lots of different types of sanders and tools at your local hardware store, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's here in uh, Canada. And it looks to me like this edge, it's hard to tell where it's pulled away from, but I'm just going to use sort of a downward motion and try not to take too much off, but just cleaning it up. So that's pretty good. And when I paint the edges, and you know, oh, there's quite a bit of tearing here, which it's not a big deal. I'm just going to figure out which way the grain is going here. I'm just going to take off some of that excess of the cotton fibers. And when I repaint, well, I shouldn't say repaint, but when I kind of turn this into a different piece of art by, I think I'm going to use like a black gesso or black paint. I'm just going to go right over this so it won't, it really won't show. And uh, again, we're embracing Wabi Sabi, which is the art of imperfection, you know, asymmetry, irregularity. And uh, it's just sort of experimentation and playing with different ways of doing art. So uh, this is where I've left off with this project. I'm going to set that aside. And let's just see what else we can do today. 22 minutes. That's pretty good. I think what I'm going to do, some of you had asked, I had shown you these little tins. I had purchased these tins on Amazon. They're quite small. I'm still looking for a larger tin. You can see it's just about the size of the palm of my hand. So it's smaller than an artist trading card, which is usually 2.5 by 3.5 uh, inches. Does that sound right? So I'd have to double check that. But these little cards... I just wanted to show you what I ended up doing because I ordered some of these pre-cut cards as well off of Amazon. And so I can link I can link it here if you're interested. Now there's no name on here. Uh, but one side of these has been really nice to paint on with watercolor. So it's, you know, considering they're probably a very, you know, <laughs> inexpensive uh, cutout. It's probably not a very high quality cotton paper. They do create blooms. They do hold the water quite well. And, uh, you know, I think they're pretty good if you're just doing these little mini projects. Now, I had purchased these with the intention of them fitting in here, and they just about fit but they don't and so i when i was first working on my oracle deck i had bought this little edge rounder i don't know if that's what it's called i would have to look up the name of this but i believe i purchased it at michael's canada and it has 10 millimeter rounded edges four millimeter or seven millimeter and I had discovered instead of trying to cut all the cards 
which is tedious in my mind. What I do is I just slip it into the 10 millimeter rounded corner edger device thing and it perfectly takes them to the size of this little tin. So I really feel like I don't want people going out and investing in this. I don't think it was too expensive, but this was sort of my workaround instead of just trimming the edge of every single card. And I do like uh, that one, you can see I have to do it again. I do really like the look of the rounded cards. And so that is how I got these so nicely in this little tin. So if you want to create a deck for yourself or with, you know, maybe your grandson, your child, maybe you're a teacher. Uh, I, these ones I actually hadn't done yet. I was embellishing a print today and I had extra paint, so I had made a little background on this card. So I still need to round the edges of this one. And yeah, this is just a really great little project. If you like to work with mini pieces of art, um, watch that I maybe can't get them out now. <laughs> they will come out, but uh, maybe there's a few in there that I didn't actually trim. There we go. Maybe the cold weather is expanding the tin on me here. So, you know, probably if you're, you know, selling your little works, your little tins, your decks, you might want to trim them down a little bit more. <laughs> this is so funny. There we go. Get these out. I'll leave those ones in there. And I just sort of felt like it would be fun to do some embellishment on these. I don't know what you all are going to be working on with me, so we can do, maybe we could just do some loose backgrounds and then a little bit of mark making. So on the one side, again, the watercolor works quite well. On the other side, it's smooth. And even if I use a permanent pen, it will smudge. So I haven't quite figured out what I want to do about that. In my other video with these cards, I was trying to write on the back. So I wrote the date, January 7th. I was taking a Skillshare class with Denise Love on Gustav Klimt. Klimt and I had used a piece of uh, plastic packing tape over the front so I wouldn't smear the pastels. So that's what these little cards are. But I did think, you know, it'd be really nice if these didn't smudge, but they do smudge. So if even now, if I warmed my finger, I would smudge some of that writing. So I just don't know if I want to cover it with plastic packing tape on the other side. Maybe you guys have a recommendation for a really great permanent pen. I've tried the Micron pens and I have tried one of my favorite dollar store studio gel pens. And it's just sort of, you know, going to be trial and error. So if you're working small, this is just a really fun way to I'm just going to see if I have you zoomed. I'm going to zoom you back in. A really fun way to work on different compositions. This would be a great place to swatch your watercolors. You know, if you want to work small, just have a really, really small, uh, like, you know, just swatching small and then being able to flip through whatever watercolor sets you might have, especially if you're like me and you have more than one. And uh, what I'm going to do maybe is grab my watercolors. And I'll just grab a few of my beam paints. I'm going to grab my little paint stone sets here. These tins would be great for watercolor, um, like a watercolor tin as well. If you just have a few watercolors, and you need a spot for them, you could put in some of that double-sided tape maybe, or uh, you know, you could decide if you wanna use like a little glue of some kind to glue them in, but these tins are good for watercolors, so that's just another option. And I'm 
gonna just pull out whoops I wasn't planning on painting uh, painting like this today I was swatching but I'm just gonna grab some of my watercolors here <laughs> I have so many little paint stones okay so we'll just do a little let's see here I can start with my opera pink which I love the lid is on oh so tight I'm just gonna put a little bit here maybe mix it in there oh wow look at it coming out of the little uh, tube so good thing I had my palette ready so I love this opera pink I'm pretty sure the around the world set by ocean paper has a very similar color but I think it's called pink opera instead of opera pink I uh, would have to check that out When you work on these little cards, you really, oh my goodness, I just saw a guy riding a bike past in minus 40 windchill, uh, you know, minus 30 degree temperatures here. Uh, you know, I feel for people who rely on uh, transportation with the bus system or walking or biking today. I'm just going to put some watercolor down on these three cards sort of in a different format and I'm going to I'm going to dip into my Rowan Berry by the Stone Ground Paint Co. This uh, beautiful shimmery watercolor and I'm just going to add a little bit in here And then I'm going to add some of this number 756 coral by that Ukrainian company titled Rosa. And I'm not really thinking too much about composition. I am just playing. And then maybe I want to use some water just to, oh, I used quite a bit. I'm used to painting larger, so this is a really neat experience. <laughs> a bit of a learning curve on these small cards. I'm going to dip into this gold over here, which I believe is the Gold Mica by Sun, Sunbeam Paints. Just put some gold down here. So I'm doing a warmer composition with the pinks and the oranges and this gold and I'm gonna where do I want to go now I'm having to reorganize myself here because usually when I do painting videos I sort of am strategic about the way I set up so this is <laughs> this is entertaining good thing you guys think I'm okay so this is watercolor that was gifted to me by Zandra Kudney and she I believe sells these through her blog and this one so she had gone to I believe some kind of an art class on making your own watercolors in New York and oh just check that out it's beautiful I think she might sell these. She had taken the class and then Patty Tolly Parrish, who's also an amazing YouTuber. She's just lovely. And uh, she, she makes them, and I think Sandra sells them. So they have like a little, a little system going. And I'm gonna dip into Sun Gold, which is another shimmery watercolor. Again, um, 
It was gifted to me. So thank you, Zandra. From, I think it's Paint and Papers Studio. So pretty. Wow, that's gorgeous. And then I'm gonna add, might just add that over here. So I'm not really, again, thinking too much about composition because the fun part about creating these little cards, they're these little mini works of art that, you know, you could use as gift tags or as thank yous for people that may have bought your art. Uh, you know, just little almost meditations uh, for yourself. Let's see if I have another watercolor set handy. This one is handy. My ocean paper around the world set. I'm just going to grab this one because I don't have all of my beam paints organized and uh, they do take a minute to be activated, if you know what I mean. Uh, just I have to spritz them and kind of get them going. I'm going to drop in a little bit of this yellow. Oh, that was vibrant. So this is from oceanpaper.com and I did a video of swatching their watercolors. I just feel like brights today and uh, this is just good practice to know I am loading quite a bit of watercolor on my brush. I almost want to work on a few more little cards. I'm going to put the yellow down in a few places and then I'm going to dip into some of these beautiful, uh, bright, darker colors. So this one is sort of a darker, plummy magenta. And I really need to grab my, my swatch card, but that's okay. We'll just wing it. I'm going to dip into the magenta on that other side. And maybe add a little bit of that magenta through here, through that coral. Just add some contrast in there. And so if you're painting along with me, it's just more of getting color down that you're craving in the moment. You know, what supplies do you have on hand? Maybe you just, all you have right now is say a box of crayons or some highlighters from work. And those will also be great. It's just a matter of getting colors down that you love and training your brain to, I suppose, just turn off and be present and really enjoy what you're doing. And so I'm just dipping into multiple greens here. I should probably activate my watercolor set just to kind of be able to get more pigment on my brush. I really love how it's almost like that that what did I I didn't put down white but that feathering that has come from a lot of water I had used uh, it's really really beautiful and I probably couldn't replicate it so that's the fun thing about you know just letting the watercolor do its job just watching it swatching it <laughs> and maybe some kind of abstract leaves in here again it doesn't have to be anything I love working on multiples. I usually paint 12 inches square is sort of my comfort when I paint watercolor or 11 by 14. And uh, so this is uh, fun. And what I'm going to do is just kind of put down some analogous colors and colors that are sort of beside each other on the color wheel. I'm looking for 
a darker green. Good thing you guys asked me to do swat a swatch. If I had it here with me, it would really make this video so much easier. So this is <laughs> really good learning. I'm gonna dip into that kind of turquoisey color. It's just beautiful. I'm gonna go up the side there. Just blend it in. Maybe add a little bit of green up here. That's enough. Maybe adding some of the green in here. I'm deciding I kind of want to have another dark in here. So I'm just using some of the dark that's already on this palette over here. Let's just see if I can zoom you guys out because I don't know if you've been seeing everything. Um, and so what I'm doing is I am kind of reacting to what's in front of me. So right now I'm grabbing the Robin's Egg Blue from Beam Paints. And I'm going to turn this over because it's easier. I'm just letting that kind of bleed, those darker greens bleeding into this beautiful robin's egg blue. I almost want to add speckles now, like when it dries with a dark brown or a black paint pen. I'm going to add this color just in here, see what I get. And I don't love the colors that that's creating, but that's okay. Uh, maybe adding this color in because I love it will change it up. And I kind of want to go now around here. Just around, like almost reductionistic painting. Just painting around the already dried watercolor leaves. And maybe just on one side here. I like that better already. I like the way this one's drying. I just can't wait to go back and do mark making over top of these with paint pens or Sharpies or pencil. Um, really whatever you have on hand. And sometimes if you're stuck, again, if you think, I don't know what color to put down, first go with Okay, what is, what is the color that first comes to your mind when you're looking at the palette? And don't overthink it, just go with it. And you can train your brain to do that. And it's quite an amazing process when you get into it. Right now, I'm not really telling you what I'm doing because I'm just so in the moment. I feel a little bit rusty with my YouTube videos because our weather had been so warm here in Calgary uh, for most of the winter so far uh, last year and uh, this year. You know, we've just, we have that uh, polar vortex that's moved in and it really just changes habits, right? And I was really spoiled. I didn't want to be inside doing videos when the weather was so nice because I've, you know, I, I'm from Calgary and historically the winters are pretty chilly. And it's all about survival. So uh, I'm really liking what I'm doing. I'm just watching things dry and kind of adding in over top. Again, choosing your favorite colors. If you choose brights, I challenge you to consider adding neutrals next to the brights. So that is something that I've kind of done in my own art uh, because I love brights. Right now I'm going into this sort of cerulean blue. And it's, uh, it's very bright. I'm probably going to break this up with maybe a darker color. So I might just go down and find this dark brown 
and I don't really care, just dark. So go into this dark blue, add some dark brown, back into the blue. I always mix my colors in the palette. That's just how I operate. So I'm gonna put that color down, it's gorgeous. And then touch the blue and go up the side just for variety. And again, go back into that dark color and I'm gonna pick this up and just go in dark around this edge. And all this is doing, these little cards, it's giving us something to work, uh, what do you call, like it's giving us something to respond to. So, you know, instead of looking at a blank white page, you are going to come back to this and you're going to respond to it with mark making and maybe fresh eyes. I'm going to leave that one over here. And I really liked that dark. So it was this, I believe this is the Payne's Gray of the Ocean Paper. And this is a brown. And I'm mixing the blue and the brown. And I really like that dark. So I'm going to put it up here. And I want you to not judge what you're doing. So if you're painting along with me, you know, just turning off any judgment that what you're doing, you know, if you feel like it's something you're not enjoying, change up what you're doing, change up the colors, maybe let it dry and walk away from it and come back to it. Just think of it as say, you know, you maybe you purchased a new art supply, a new watercolor, and you just want to see what that looks like and if you like it. And instead of, you know, having it just sit in its packaging or a drawer, getting it out and uh, using it. So again, this is the glossy side, so I'm turning it over and I'm going to just keep painting. I'm craving that really beautiful bright orange on the ocean pot. And again, I got a lot on my brush, so that's okay. A lot of orange going on. And I'm going to mix it with the opera pink and the dark. And I have a very interesting color going on here. And I'm just craving more of that opera pink. Sometimes when you're painting, you may not like the composition, where it's going. And then if you let it dry and come back to it, you know, you can turn it over or just see it in a different light. So I'm going to just let that dry there. It's quite wet. And what I'm going to do now is we can maybe just do a little bit of mark making. I'm just going to close my palette. Whoops. I should let my palette dry before I close it. So that's good to know there. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just free up some space so I don't smudge anything. And a lot of these are drying quite quickly, which is nice. It's a good opportunity on some of them that are still wet to maybe use your Neocolor water-soluble crayons or the non-water-soluble crayons. Uh, so as an example, I can maybe just leave these out. Let me see if I have my Neocolor crayons. Where are they? So 
So here's an example of a Neo Color 2 crayon. So a water soluble crayon. And I almost want to use maybe a different color. Let's just see if we go in here while it's still wet. And just put these little marks. It's interesting. Actually, I really like the textures uh, that I'm getting here. So I'll see if I can just bring you back in. Oops. So this is a water soluble crayon. You can just see some of that texture that I have in there, almost like little butterflies here. So I'm just going in while the paint is still wet. And then this one is a Neo Color 1, which is a wax crayon. It's not water soluble. And so I'm just sort of drawing some line work on here. And so when it gets wet, it doesn't move. It resists the water. So that's just sort of a different technique. And thinking I'd like to, let's just see. Probably gonna actually let that dry. I think what I'm gonna do is sign off for today and we'll just let those let those dry and I think the next videos I'm gonna do will be paint pens, mark making, just finishing up some of these little cards with different supplies like you know water soluble crayons, gelatos, neo color crayons, uh, whatever materials you have on hand and yeah, I will link as much as I can that I've talked about today, including this little punch device to do the rounded corners, these little cards, which I had ordered from Amazon, which again, you can make your own and uh, it's just a little bit more tedious. And then these tins as well. So with the rounded corners, these cards fit really wonderfully in these tins. I believe you have to buy a pack of 20 or 22 of the tins and maybe just one or two of these packs of cards. So yeah, thank you so much for all of your incredible comments and inquiries and encouragement. I really appreciate it on this cold day. It's been so nice to share the time with you and I wish you much inspiration.